You made it into our brake check video. I did on your YouTube video? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You finally made the cut, Mom. Congratulations. <laughs> well, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. Anyways, go ahead. What you need? <laughs> Welcome to Brake Check. I'm here with Brian, and this is a 2021 Oops. Kia K5 Jeez. GT. Wow. Which we, hey, there's Craig. Man. Hey. What you doing back there? I thought you said this was an Optima. No, this is a K5. This is based so on an it's Optima. It's a Blazer. It's not a Blazer. No. It's, it's, this is Korean. This is not from the General. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it, there's also two more letters back there. Yes. That goes along with those quad tips and rear diffuser. GT. GT. Uh, no, no, no. This is this is not boy racer. This is dad racer. Oh, okay. But now we've already reviewed a K5. Yeah. This is a little different. This is still blue because of those things. But this has the 2.5 turbo, not the one. So it's also different turbo. up here too. Yeah, not just the back. Exactly. All right. Let's talk about exterior. Okay, let's do it. Um, what do you think about these headlights? That is that is what everyone talks about. You mean the lightning bolt? Uh, yes. This is yeah. Exactly. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> it looks awesome. It's really good. More LED. Look, credit the Kia because a lot of manufacturers do the LED thing because they have to. Right. I think they feel like they have to, but well, they just kind of mail it in. Well, hang on. When people are doing this, you kind of have to. They, right? right. They didn't mail it in. They've got it right. That is pretty freaking And the awesome. dial awesome too at night. It does. Um, now, we've talked a lot about how there are cues from Audi on this car, which Kia is not new to doing. Well, all through the lineup. Through the lineup. Yep. This is no different. Mm -hmm. um, the rear taillight section like this just says A7 to me. So bad. You think so? In a good way. It you looks good. Absolutely. You a little swoop yeah. back here? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I can see that. This tip right here you. says F-150. <laughs> F-150, okay. okay. It also says tell you ride. Yeah. Um, but the overall looks are amazing. I think yeah, for what this market is, Kia is making a really good point as to why sedans should not be dead, even though they're, let's be honest, they're struggling compared to crossovers. They are. There's a really good argument to get one. And this also ties into the family, the the front runner of the family, the, the Stinger. Yeah, there's a lot of Stinger cues. A lot of Stinger cues yes, in here absolutely. too, with the wheels and the front end. And your quad tips. And the quad tips. Yeah. So they did a good job of marrying that together too. I think so it was good. We're not going to get bogged down this review on a lot of the things we've already covered, meaning right. interior, exterior. We'll briefly touch on those. The real news is the, the engine part. Let's get to drive in and talk about that. Let's do it. All right, Craig, we're in it. We're going to basically skip interior on this. If you want to see more about that, check out the previous uh, K5 review. Yep. Because this has got the 2.5 turbo. We've got to figure out what that's all about. Hit it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it will flat out burn out through third gear. One wheelie peely up front. Well, left and right wheelie peely. It'll switch around <laughs> sometimes. Um, and that really is the hat trick to this and the biggest difference from the previous K5 that we've driven. It's been a long time since they, somebody's put a, this powerful of an engine in just front wheel drive. It's a little bit bonkers. Thank you. I remember a long time ago, Saab talked about how you couldn't put 300 horsepower effectively through front wheel drive. And this is an example of it not effectively going through front wheel drive. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. And I've, I've watched some content on this vehicle and everyone wants to say, oh, it should be all wheel drive, it should be all wheel drive. It would help in some aspects. There's an argument there. Yeah. You have a really good eight-speed transmission, which is a dual clutch. Yep. Twin clutch, and there are wet clutch packs. And it's interesting that Hyundai Kia uses the same transmission in other applications with all-wheel drive. Yeah. But not in this, even though you can get all-wheel drive with the 1.6 in this. And I have a theory behind that. Okay. This car, and I, let me pause it real quick. My theory is that if they went with all-wheel drive, the expectation might be different. Mm. Because this much power in all-wheel drive says, a lot of things. WRX STI. Not an immediate, in a mid-sized car? But, but maybe not, but it takes engineering to make it work well. For example, the Fusion Sport had a really good engine mm -hmm. and all-wheel drive mm -hmm. with a really debatable transmission. Mm -hmm. And they never marketed it as an ST because it takes a lot more effort to make a cohesive driving car. Yeah. And by not putting all-wheel drive in this, the expectation is plateaued a little bit. I, I, I like your idea. I think you're wrong though, because okay. they literally compare this to the BMW 3 Series on their own website. They're wrong. I agree. I'm, I'm sorry. That's but that's not... what they're doing. My theory is it's going to be a like 2022 model year. They may add it. That would be my. I guess. think they will too. So, um, I can only imagine what the numbers will be then. This thing yeah. is zero to sixty in five point one. It's, it's crazy. It's nuts. Uh, and that's and I'm not sure how that number's ever been achieved because you just I it doesn't matter. It blows the tires off. Wet, but, dry. 
all the time. Yeah, whatever, whatever mode, Sport, Sport Plus, it's yeah. blowing the tires. And the funny part is, if you go to Sport Plus, traction control is defaulted to off. Right. Which I think is a hoot. Mm -hmm. And so here's my real theory on this car. It is not afraid to laugh at itself. <laughs> it does not take itself too seriously, and so why should we? It doesn't mind being a little bit of a jerk. Hmm. We'll talk Mazda later on about that. <laughs> uh, so back to the 2.5. It's not the most refined engine on the planet. No. But it has a, it just has gobs of torque everywhere, but it doesn't settle for torque only. We have some competing manufacturers yeah. that choose to be torquey down low and have that around town punch. This has the torque down low and the Madman 290 horsepower all the way to redline. On regular gas. Um, which is impressive. Yep. The numbers in this car are really good and it's really fun to drive. It is fun to drive. It's fun, it, it's a, well, it's a hoot. It's a hoot it's to a drive. It's a hoot, It's yeah. a hoot to drive. Um, do you like the sounds it makes? I don't, look, like I said, it's not the most refined four banger. There's no V-Tech giving us in here. Um, it's not a throaty V6. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit rackety. Yeah. But that was day one. On day two, I went, yeah, it's a racket, but I'm blowing tires off and I'm giggling on my way to work. And there's something to be said about that. I'm with you. I don't really like the noises it makes per se, but I do like that you get to choose whether or not you want fake engine noise and how yes. much fake engine noise you want. Yes. I like that. Big props to Kia. And for, the for, fake for making an optional thing you can do. And the fake engine noise is actually matches what it is. Yeah, it's, it's not a fake V8 sound or V6 right. sound. <laughs> It's just ignorantly fun. This car's party trick, it's not just the motor. The, the motor is fun, the turbo is great, the right. power it makes is amazing. It's this eight-speed DSG. This is a great transmission. Totally. It, 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 you get the best of both, you truly get the best of both worlds in this. Okay, and you brought it up earlier, because we, we've thought, talked about this a lot. This transmission kind of came out of nowhere for us, because you mm -hmm. never expect it from, this is something you, Audi's been playing the DSG game since 2010, mm -hmm. 2009, right in that era. Um, this is just as good. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think it's better than that generation. Now, the current yeah. the current Volkswagens are really good. Sure. This is too. It is great. So there's never a point in this car where I go, yeah, but there's a, a fatal flaw. There isn't one. No. And in normal mode, you drive around town, and you're, it's sensible. No compromise. You want to get serious on the back row, put it in sport mode, and it'll rev match down just for you, or you want to shift it yourself, it's quick, it rips yeah. them off. Yeah. It's, it's, slow. it's so much fun. If you avoid the GT1 package, this car can be had for $30,000. Right, take. yes. You can get this thing for, yeah, right at 30. Okay, what else for 30 grand with this much interior space? It goes 0 to 60 in 5.1. Is this fun? Gets 30, almost 33 miles a gallon on my drive to work one yeah. day. Yeah, and you weren't hypermiling, by the nope, way. No, I was driving normal. I drive a city route, and it was definitely... Um, what are you going to answer that? Mom's calling. Sorry, Mom, I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> on my city route, I was getting mid-20s. Yeah, and I was, and, be, and I'll be honest, I was driving like I was a little bit of a hoon. You were enjoying the uh, attributes of the engine, and they're great. Yeah, I think we should just really leave it at that. It's yeah. a fun car. It's a good package. I will add one one more thing. GT1 package. If you skip the GT1 package, uh, you lose the uh, crotch chillers. That is a big deal. But you gain a tuning knob. Ooh, just what would, what do you like more though? It would be I would, it would be really hard for me to. Well, let me reframe that. Do you like a tuning knob in five thousand dollars, or do you like ball chillers? That's a tough one. Here's another tough one <laughs> that I want the audience to help us out with. Okay. GT1 package with crush chillers and no tuning knob, or no Sands GT1 package and crush chillers but gain a tuning knob, or 1.6 of the all-wheel drive. Mm, because that really hooks. We've driven yeah. that, that engine and transmission yep. uh, in the Celtos, mm -hmm. which is also a lot of fun. Yes. So, a lot of compelling options in this K5. Man, you can definitely tell that they were focusing on some German competitors, mm -hmm. and they got really close. They did. They, it's not quite as refined as an Audi four-cylinder or a BMW no. four-cylinder. it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper, and I think it's more fun than a lot of those are because it's not that serious. This is a really good value. If you, want, if you just need to drive the work and back and you need to have some room, you can do it in this and have fun. You really can. It's awesome. And for a good price. Yeah. Not not. Who's there? K5. K5 who? K5 who? It's a hoot to drive. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a minivan. Dad jokes don't apply oh, here. Oh, okay. <sighs> and on that note, please be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, breakcheckshow.com. Brian says I have to do this, so I'm doing this, and he never likes it. My ending, I'm gonna like his ending. You let us know which ending you like better, his or mine. Thanks for riding with us today. We'll see you next time. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs>